I'm standing in front of Kampnitz, an abandoned Nazi military base just west of Berlin. And as you can see behind me, it's a ruined set of buildings. In fact, there's over 50 buildings. This base used to house between three and 5,000 soldiers. The Nazis utilized this complex from 1937 onwards, and it was the cavalry and the motorized brigade which used to have their leadership training center here. By April of 1945, with the Russians coming in from the east, the Nazis vacated this leadership school promptly. And only a day after having vacated it, the Russians took over. And the communists were in here for several decades after World War II, which is why we see a concoction of both Nazi relics as well as communist Russian relics. It's a very interesting site for us to have a look at. One of the many historical curiosities about Kampnitz concerns Oberst Leutnant Hans Kramer, who was the second commander here and took troops from Kampnitz to participate in the invasion of Poland. Kramer received the Knight's Cross and German Cross in gold. He later became commander of the 15th Panzer Division. Kramer was thought to be complicit in the assassination attempt on Hitler in July 1944 and was imprisoned by the SS. He was a good friend of Graf von Stauffenberg, who had trained in the Reichswehr Cavalry School, the precursory school to Krampnitz in the 1920s. Well, this is clearly the gymnasium of Krampnitz, and it's seen better days. The woods are rotten out, but we can see just in the back wall there, one of the old uh, Olympic symbols from the Berlin 1936 Olympics. A further curiosity is that Enemy at the Gates, Resident Evil, Mein Führer, and Inglorious Bastards were all filmed here. The communists occupied the military base of Krampnitz from 45 to 1992 and they made a number of changes for fitting of their cultural standards. As you can see from the latrine systems around me, these are Russian squatting toilets, which frankly I've never seen before. up the latest communist news. This building was clearly used by the Nazi motorized division and driving school, as can be seen by the relief above me. When the communists began to occupy Krampnitz, they needed to put their own communist stamp on this facility. And behind me, we see some of the icons of socialism or communism. Why would the Germans 
known for their engineering marvels, build a cavalry school at Kampnitz? Well, by 1939, the Wehrmacht was still using over 600,000 horses. That's why. It was meant as a fusion between the old Prussian cavalry tradition and the more modern Nazi war machine, including armored cars and tanks. After the war, the Soviets expanded Kampnitz significantly. It was home to various units, including the 10th Guards Tank Division. It also became a training ground for the units of the German Democratic Republic. Well, this is the holy grail of Krampnitz. This is the main officer's building. We have this elaborate cobblestone pathway, which big black Mercedes would have stopped at. Beautiful urns and this very beautiful set of two pillars in the National Socialist style. Fantastic building. Krampnitz military base Hall of the People and it's been built in the typical National Socialist era style. In fact, this room is almost an exact re replica or resemblance to the Reich's Chancellery, which was in Berlin of Adolf Hitler, which of course was demolished soon after the war. It is therefore a precious relic of that style of architecture and history. The site has changed ownership many times since the Soviets left. With an area of 112 hectares, not all of the perimeter of the site was fenced when I visited, especially entering from the northern sector or Der Große Graben as it's known there. I have since heard that entry to the site is now restricted and the area is marked for a complete redevelopment. Every single entrance has been bricked closed. This is one. That's the window. Well, we're in one of the officers' wings of Kampnitz and we have found the last remaining swastika probably in the whole of Germany. The authorities have done well to attempt to cover it up but other red counters have been here before us to have a bit of a look. So follow me and we'll show you the last remaining Eagle and swastika in Germany. 